show was brought to you by the Peter Gabriel Amusement Park, Sledgehammer, where you can ride the Big Dipper, where the amusement never ends. So pay them a visit and open up your fruit cage. So as you would have seen from my last video, my friend Justin and I took a trip <laughs> up to the Peak District in order to take some pictures, make some videos and generally have a catch up. I had originally planned a multi-stop tour of the peaks, but unfortunately the weather had other ideas and we had to cut it short. We did however get some good light at the first stop, Hen Cloud. Here I loaded up my Texas Leica with a roll of Delta 100, then poorly explained the process of taking trichrome images. Let's red first, because it's easiest to remember. Red, green, blue, but then I'll do red, blue, green the same filter for back time. It's just so I know later on when to build. But our exposure without a filter would be a 60th F8 because this is three stops. You need to go one, two, three, down to an eighth F8. So that's what I'm going to do now as soon as Justin gets out of the way. Hey, hey. <laughs> okay, so to explain this a little bit better, we need to take white light and then separate it into three different channels. In this case, we're using red, green, and blue. We use colour filters on the front of our lens to do this. And as I was trying to explain extremely poorly, you need to keep a correct exposure. And that's when you change your exposure value to keep everything consistent. Once you've done that, you'll have three negatives that you need to colour the same colour as the filter that you took that image with. So once again, you'd colour one red, one green and one blue. From there you can put them into an editing software like Photoshop, layer them up, change the blend mode of all of them to add and you should end up with a colour image. But anyway, that's enough explaining from me, let's get back to the video. We thought forgetting to double wind on was going to be our only trouble. We were gravely mistaken. Little did we know, 400 metres up above sea level, disaster was about to strike. Once I had performed a spell I learnt from a necromancer, we continued taking exposures until we had done one exposure for each filter. This was the result we got from combining all three exposures. I feel like this is my best trichrome, so it's all downhill from here, I'm afraid. This image really shows the benefits of the trichrome process. Pastel tones. Motion in the grass. Distant Technicolor ghosts. Candy floss skies. From there, we ventured further up the hill. About halfway up the hill, Justin captured the most cinematic footage of me ever taken. Whoa! Is it quite... <laughs> as tempted as I was to yeet myself off the top of Pride Rock, I remembered that I had two rolls of Pro 400H, which I could use as a deposit for a new house. So I only took two images on this trip, so I thought I'd include some more examples of trichromes for you to enjoy. Now, let's get back to the top of that hill. So for the next trichrome, we perched precariously on the edge of a protruding cliff. Uh, th there isn't really much to say about this one, it just sort of happened. 
Whilst it's not as good as the first one, it's still a pretty good example of what you can get out of a trichrome. After finishing that roll, I put in some Rolleye Superpan 200 and did some infrared images. I want to give a big thank you to Justin for putting up with me and filming on this day. You're a star, mate. It's packing up. Hey, Jack. You're back. Oh, great. If you want any more information on trichromes, please feel free to just shout out, send me a message, or go to the Ilford website. I've written an article. I'll link it down below. Give it a read. Any other questions, just give me a shout. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>